everyone. Now I'm going to tie a stonefly and this is inspiration, uh, I got an inspiration for this fly uh, by just thinking about simulator fly and as you will see it's uh, very similar how you tie a simulator and this fly. So let me start and uh, for the hook I'm going to use size 10. Believe it or not I don't have anything bigger right now. Uh, at least not for dry flies. So the hook is Gamakatsu R19 uh, 1FT and this one is one times fine. There is the same model with three times fine which is like rather too thin. I guess it's like a niche hook that's uh, intended to be used on the, those uh, small fish or whatever. So a uh, very important thing is to use GSP thread uh, I'm using for the tag and for the thorax I'm using pink uh, eye stubbing in so this color for the body I'll use the same brand just in orange uh, you can use uh, more like uh, some kind of uh, yellow uh, cream whatever color you like I mean whatever insect you're, you're trying to represent use it I'm using CDC in this color and this one is, as you can see, rather long and it's rich in those fibers, barbules. Uh, again, same brand. Uh, to be honest, not a bad brand at all. And it's quite cheap. The stuff are cheap there. I'm not sure if you can get it in Europe, I'm getting it in China. So this CDC is amazing. And I'm using a natural CDC that uh, comes from hunters usually. As you can see, it's natural gray color. So let me start by tying the fly. Start tying the fly near the eye of the hook. This is a large fly, so there is no need uh, to be very, very cautious about the thread wraps, but you can if you want. It's good practice, of course. So just start it near the eye. I want to cover the whole body shank, body hook shank, sorry, because when you pinch materials between two thread wraps, as opposed to thread wrap and uh, bare hook shank, uh, it's much more difficult to pull out of the material uh, when you have two thread wraps uh, instead of the other option. So I'll just go near the end and now I will pull out a little bit of uh, dubbing and I want this to be my hotspot okay so I'm just a little pinch here maybe I will need more I'm not sure but I'll just fold it double it and when I think it's enough I just take one two reps fold it together and as you can see it's more or less enough now I'll make small uh, transition here. Luckily I'm using GSP because I'm touching my hook like crazy. Okay, so now I'm going to make rather large and long uh, dubbing loop and I'm going to leave it uh, for the time being here at the end. Now uh, the little tip here uh, if you want to be sure that you tie every fly properly, uh, make sure that you do this. I don't do this uh, usually, well, I don't do it ever, but it's a good thing to do if you're just starting your tying. So just make a whip finish knot uh, so your thread won't go left or right and just leave it there. And when you reach this point with your materials, you'll just know that you need to do the next step. Uh, and the next step is actually uh, applying uh, uh, wings, catching wings. So now I'm going to take this thread, put it into the foam slot and remove the stem. So what I usually do, I pull out all those fibers like so, I'll line it here, I'll try to do it so you can see it at least a little bit and then press it with your needle like so and I have to do it here as well. So you need to have those fibers perpendicular 
and you need to use paper clip to catch those fibers. What I like to do, because I have shorter ends here and longer fibers here, I like to position those longer fibers facing downwards in my loop. So I will make sure that uh, later as I advance, the longer fibers will be next to the thorax. So just open the foam and cut. I'll cut the CDC right now. And as you can see, like I'm using almost entire CDC feather here. So as I said, I want it downwards, facing downwards. Before I do that, I need to apply some dubbing here. First, I will, need, I will put my dubbing twister uh, so I have some tension here. And take out some dubbing. And just a little tip. You want to position to put dubbing the same length as your CDC is here uh, because you're making a dubbing rope here. So I'll just more or less measure it. You don't need to do a tight dubbing here. Just put it on the on the thread like so. I'll just check it. It's good. And if it everything is fine, I'll pinch it with two threads two thread strands and remove the paper clip. Now very important thing is to hold everything together because if you split those threads everything will go away, fall apart. And now I'll spin everything. And if you did everything right, your materials will be tightly secured. Now the reason why I'm using GSP it's because I can pull more pressure on this GSP than on normal thread. With normal thread it would be broken by now. It's like super super tight thing to do. And uh, if you can use more pressure between two uh, thread strands uh, then it means that your fly will be more durable. And that's important. Especially if you don't have second fly. Now, uh, now you can see that like how much material I have left so sometimes you can slightly overlap your materials if you want uh, because you you don't want to go with this these materials uh, more uh, like from this point hanging thread point so I'll just make one little turn here and that's it I spin my th tying thread around the uh, loop I do it twice as you can see because I don't want my uh, loop to come out. I'll just leave a little tag even I just do that as well because it's safer uh, it won't go out. Now as you can see this fly looks already buggy and you can use it like this if you want and just cover the whole body. Uh, what I forgot to do is obviously to cut this tag to length but I can do it now as you can see so the next step is applying some wings attaching some wings so like this now for the wings I'm using two natural CDC feathers and these are oval shaped uh, CDC feathers and both are bent I mean I was lucky this time both are bent in the opposite side so when I overlap them uh, they will actually look like little wings. The reason why I'm using oval shaped feathers is because they will have better profile um, uh, when you look from the fish's point of view and you can use triangular one, whatever, it's it's fine. So just pull those barbules towards the tips just to ensure that you're going to catch all of them and then I like those tips to ex actually extend a little bit more uh, like real sunfly. So what I'm doing here, I'll try to catch all those materials on the top. And now one, two, three, then I'll pull this up just to secure it so it won't pull out. Now check your wings now. Everything if everything is good. They're slightly bending towards me. 
so I'll try to yeah correct it but you can do it in the next step as well now very important thing to do is to cut everything by an angle so what I like to do just like so cut it by an angle because I will show you right now if you cut it flush uh, you will create a bump and that bump will uh, make your materials slip and like this you will see that like I'm catching each strand of CDC like this and I'm creating a taper as well so I'm actually securing my materials way better than if I if I just cut it flush now I will create another loop and this is the final step in making this fly uh, I also like to do uh, to make a whoop finish knot sometimes here because it's near the eye of the hook and it's very easy to slip and uh, lose everything at the end now I'll do the same steps just with different materials now so it's not the colored CDC it's natural and it's not yellow uh, ice it's uh, as you can see it's the pink one okay I'll just put my dubbing twister here again same length and you can add more ice less ice it's it's just up to you again oval shaped feather this one is not actually good quality but it's for thorax it's more than good it has broken tip now cut everything near the stem okay as i told you longer fibers are facing downwards same as for the for body that's it now there is slight gap here between CDC and the, and the dubbing but I will use this dubbing to, posi to position or reposition wings if needed so twist everything well make nice dubbing brush okay as you can see it's very very nice dubbing brush now with your non-dominant hand position everything right reposition my lamp okay now because it's GSP I can allow myself to cinch it down with this loop as well and as you can see I'm doing it uh, here I'm repositioning wings and now I can go forward stroking back all the fibers that I have ensuring that I'm not going to catch them hiding them between wraps so this is more or less it uh, I'm having just right amount of space here for the head so again a couple of wraps around the uh, loop and then a couple of wraps up a couple of wraps around the loop and then a couple of wraps here cut everything else now I'll cut it a little bit closer now while stroking back all the fibers create the head this will ensure that you have a head uh, available for tying the tippet in so with my non-dominant hand I'm just stroking back everything okay like so and one more just to ensure that everything is set got the excess here what I like to do is just final touch I like to comb everything a little bit check is everything sitting properly so left and right so ensuring that this fly will actually lay low on the surface because stoneflies are rather large insects they don't ride high on the surface that's impossible for them even though they are aquatic insects they lay flat on the surface with their body and CDC is ensuring that uh, this uh, particular pattern is uh, screaming I'm alive just eat me and uh, just try this one tell me what you think if you liked it uh, please consider subscribing sharing this video it helps a lot uh, thank you very much for watching and see you next weekend